Hello, I'm Kurt Johnson, Principal Consultant here at Headspring. And I'm Gauri Ariazarian, Principal Consultant and Software Whisperer at Headspring. And we're here to talk about... Replatforming! So if you're like most companies with legacy systems, you're going to be looking at modernizations and frequently here at Headspring, when we are discussing with companies about modernization, we talk about replatforming. So, Garo, what are some of the benefits that replatforming uh, can bring to your applications? So replatforming is about bringing modern practices into your development organization. It's about operational agility, right? This is about dealing with change coming from customers, dealing from change coming from within your organization, and helping you to get value to the customers faster, right? It's about reducing that time to market. So on the flip side, it's about cost, right? Maybe you're going to be reducing your cost or you're changing your cost structure or you need to spend more money to grow your business, right? And so replatforming helps you to achieve that more effectively and gives you the ability to react to that more quickly. So this increase of operational agility, does that also increase scalability and maybe even help to future-proof our applications? Sure, because modern applications scale differently from legacy apps, right? In, in legacy applications, you're really throwing a heavier server, you're throwing more compute at the problem. But for modern applications, you're really about scaling out, right? You're throwing more computers at the problem to deal with customer requests coming in, working across regions, whatever's going on there, right? Being able to scale out instead of up. Now, these services are providing a platform for you, right? So in the cloud environment, when you replatform, you're able to provide a platform as a service, which gives you the ability to focus on your applications and data, right? And not worry as much about all the infrastructure that's used to build up your, your solution. So how does that change the way that we build software? What that changes is that you focus more on apps instead of servers. In a, in a legacy environment, you're really concerned about which software is running on which server and how they're interconnecting. But in the platform as a service, a lot of that's taken care of for you, right? It's all abstracted away. And so you focus on your applications and your data more than anything else. Uh, so the way we achieve that is basically everything can be treated almost like a Docker container, right? Docker is the is kind of the main word that comes up, the name brand that comes up. And it's all about containers, right? Containers, containers, containers. <laughs> your app lives in a container and you put it to run wherever you want to run. Now, when you're looking at your organizational process to, to work with this more effectively, you need to think about your maturity as an organization with respect to the cloud, right? right? As you improve the maturity of your organization, you're able to work more effectively with the systems that the cloud provides and you're able to move your applications to production environments more quickly. Sometimes this means that your software architecture has to change. Sometimes this means that the way you do business has to change. Maybe your ops culture has to change, or it could be something where you're, you're bringing in a DevOps infrastructure or a DevOps culture process to it. So containers are great. Uh, what happens when an organization isn't ready to, um, or they don't have <clears> the <throat> bandwidth to make their applications fully cloud ready? If an organization isn't quite ready, then what they can do is uh, use the cloud provider's infrastructure as a service, which basically means that the cloud is gonna provision your virtual machines for you, right? right? So normally in your, your physical environment, you're deploying the servers, you, you probably already have a virtualization, virtualization infrastructure, but you, this is gonna move it to the cloud where you can basically scale out as much as you need to, right? You need to change the virtual machines and add to it. Now, you still have to provide some structure around it, right? Having templates that make sense, the operating systems you want to have because the cloud lets you do whatever you want. Right. But you want to rein it in a bit to keep it under control, to keep it manageable, right, for your organization. So the way that you move your application then is going to be using a lift and shift strategy where you lift your application out of the your private data center and you drop it into your virtualized infrastructure on the cloud and in theory, it runs the same way that it runs in your private data center because it's still a full operating system. It's running whatever you're running. There may be some tweaks you have to do because the versions of operating systems available might be newer in the cloud and you have to kind of take advantage of that or figure out how you port to that version. But more or less, you're going to be able to run it effectively the same way. So that means you basically have the same app on the same machine, but someone else has the task of maintaining it. So. It's almost like if somebody moved your cheese, it's the same cheese, but at a different location. Exactly. Same cheese, different wheel. So a public cloud basically has as much or as little scalability as I need them. Exactly. So public cloud is able to scale out because they've got all the resources available and they're able to schedule your compute time with everyone else's that's running on their infrastructure. 
So that way they're able to spread out the compute across all the resources that are in their data centers, right? And across regions as well. Same thing with their storage and networking, they're able to spread it across to bring you the scalability, but also to keep the cost manageable as well. Right. For some organizations, a public cloud is not really an option for them. Maybe it's risk avoidance or uh, internal security, uh, any, any other type of regulation. What other options are there for companies that don't want to replatform to a public cloud? All right, so companies in that case are able to take the same technologies and techniques that are used in the public cloud and move them into their, their data centers, or you could also call it a private cloud, right? Because that's really just another name for the data center is a private cloud. So the same infrastructure as a service tools that you can use in the public cloud, you can also deploy into the private. So using VMware, using OpenShift, using other sort of tools that are there to be able to, to provision the virtual machines you need programmatically and automatically and enforce the templates that you need to do and, and timings, all the administrative stuff that you would do in the public cloud, the tooling is there to do it in the private cloud as well. So you still maintain your, your operational security you're able to follow your corporate policies, but you can still give your development teams a dev environment that you can spin up as needed, or you can have a production environment that's that's reproducible and scriptable and use the tooling to provide all this. A lot of organizations have their own data centers, and so they have an understanding of uh, virtualization for data storage for infrastructure, uh, but what, what are some of the optimizations that a private cloud replatforming might provide for an uh, maybe improving an existing application. So for existing applications that are already, let's say already in a public cloud or are already modernized, you can then bring the platform as a service on top of it and build on it, right? So as you grow your infrastructure, then your platform support comes too. So things like Kubernetes, right? Buzzword compliant, Kubernetes, right? Everyone's talking about it. You can use that to bring platform as a service into your organization. There's companies that basically manage a giant Kubernetes cluster or other container scheduled cluster on their network and just run whatever they need to run in there and manage it as they go. And there's other tools too, like Cloud Foundry, OpenShift, the same things we talked about a little bit before. Those same tools give you this application kind of containerization support in different forms, but the same basic idea. So you can still take the modern tools and techniques you've applied to your application. And if your policy says, I have to run this on-prem, you bring those tools into it and run it on-prem. That makes a lot of sense. So Docker containers are the underlying driving force behind PaaS, and that infrastructure as a service is more virtualization, your VMs. So it, a cloud can be basically anywhere. It could be Amazon, Microsoft's, or maybe even your own cloud. And that's exactly right. I mean, you've seen the t-shirt, right? It says the cloud, it's just somebody else's computer, right? So it just as easily, it could be your own computer. Just because the replatforming is typically talking about moving to the public cloud, doesn't mean that you have to. You could take those same tools, techniques, processes, and benefits, bring them into the private data center, and take advantage of them there just the same. So thanks for joining us. I'm Kurt. And I'm Garo. And if you'd like to know more about how replatforming can benefit your organization, we're here to talk. Head on over to headspring.com and find us on the contacts page. Or tweet at us. On the Twitters. That's right. See you next time. I just finger pistoled. I did too.